When it comes to taboo conversation topics, the main ones are politics, religion, sex, and money. Well, in this video, we're obviously gonna be talking about money. I'm gonna cover all the jobs I've had since I was 17 and how much I made at each one. So I don't have a four-year college degree, and back when I was younger and more directionalist, I was always curious as to what jobs paid well and which ones didn't, especially in the creative fields where it can vary so greatly. So from the food and retail industries to music and video production, let's get into it. My first job when I was in high school was working as a dishwasher at the restaurant of a country club. And it wasn't like a super bougie country club, it was pretty middle class. Here I made $7 an hour and generally had four and a half hour long shifts. So usually I just made enough to fill up my tank with gas and maybe buy a couple of CDs. Because you know, no streaming back then. I never really enjoyed high school, so my senior year, I decided to graduate a semester early. I finished school in December, and then in January, I got a job as a sales associate at Circuit City in the TV department. So if you thought me buying CDs was telling of my age, well, working at Circuit City is another tell. The pay was just $9 an hour, and at that point, they had already eliminated sales commissions, so there's really no incentive to sell other than it was your job. But still, while my friends had homework and were in high school worrying about tests, I was working, making money, selling plasma TVs. It was pretty cool. By the time summer rolled around, I decided I had enough of retail and went to college. I got an associate's degree in recording arts in just 12 months, which takes me to my next job. After school, I moved to LA and I got a job at a really nice recording studio called Henson, right in the heart of Hollywood. It's one of those historic recording studios with really awesome gear, really great sounding rooms, and a lot of history. But of course, I was at the bottom of the totem pole working as a runner, which is essentially like an intern. I cleaned, got food for pop stars, all other sorts of errands, and more cleaning. Like taking a Q-tip to a large format console, cleaning every knob and fader. I'm not kidding. I often worked the night shift, which started at 5 p.m. and went until I cleaned up after the last artist left for the day, which could have been 2 a.m. or maybe 9 a.m., no telling which. All of that paid me minimum wage in California, which at the time was $8 an hour. I did often work overtime, which gave me a time and a half at $12 an hour, but still, I was barely scraping by. After about six months, there were still like six runners ahead of me for a promotion to become an assistant engineer, which also has bad pay and terrible hours. So I decided to quit and move back to Indiana to play in a band with some friends. So while playing in a band in a college town, I got a job as a pizza delivery driver. This paid about $5.15 an hour, but with tips, it paid closer to $15 to $20 an hour on a good night. It was a pretty decent job, I had some fun, and ate a lot of pizza. After the band fizzled out, I eventually moved to Chicago and got a job as an intern at a recording studio where they do a lot of work for commercials and movies. It's one of the largest studios in Chicago, but it paid absolutely nothing. Not only were there too many interns for how much work there actually was to do, they rarely put you in situations where you could actually learn something. So it felt like a huge waste of time. After three months, my internship was up. They didn't offer me a position, so good riddance. I'd previously done some minor video editing in school and I enjoyed it, so I decided to put together a now embarrassing video resume and was able to get a job as a part-time video editor for a small production company. Despite no real experience, I was able to start on a trial basis making $20 an hour. After the first week went well, I started working 30 to 40 hours per week. It was a lot of internal corporate videos, conference videos, and small business promo videos. So it wasn't the most exciting stuff, but I did learn a lot. I also went on shoots as a production assistant and learned a lot from the production side as well. I worked there for about three and a half years and I got incremental $3 raises throughout. So by the time I quit, I was making about $32 an hour or a little over $50,000 a year. While working as a video editor, I also picked up a side job working some evenings at a recording studio. This was a smaller studio than the last one, but they gave you a lot of freedom. I was essentially the night manager there, which didn't pay anything, but I was able to book a few sessions as an engineer, which paid about $30 an hour. After that, I worked for a real estate investor looking at houses and analyzing potential deals. It yet again didn't pay anything, but if he ended up closing on a deal that I brought him, I would have made a commission of like 10% or something. But there were a lot of issues and bottlenecks working there, so after a few months of no deals, I decided to quit. Also throughout this time, I was working as a second shooter for my then girlfriend, now wife's photography business. I would shoot weddings with her on the weekends, which depending on the time and the budget, I would make about $200 to $300 per shoot. While it was a ton of work, I quickly developed my skills as a photographer and learned the ins and outs of my camera. 
2015, Rachel and I decided to pack up and move to LA. I didn't have a job lined up, but I did work remotely for that video production company where I was a video editor, except this time I was working mostly on motion graphics projects. When that work started drying up, I decided to work on my reel and try to get a full-time job here in LA as a motion graphics artist. While I was working on my reel and applying and interviewing at different places, I needed to make a little extra money, so I decided to try Instacart out. In case you aren't familiar, Instacart is an app where you can pretty much just have groceries delivered to you. So I would shop at a variety of different grocery stores around the downtown LA area and then make the deliveries. All my past experience as a studio runner and doing pizza deliveries made me really quick at shopping and delivering food. It was pretty stressful driving around downtown LA trying to find parking or parking in alleys and loading zones and hoping I wouldn't get a ticket. At the time, Instacart paid a per item fee, a flat delivery fee, and then you also got any tips that the customer left. Sometimes I'd be shopping for a business and they'd leave me a monster tip of over $40 or something, but generally it averaged out to $20 to $25 per hour, not including gas or the wear and tear on my car. Luckily, I only had to do Instacart for a couple months and I then got a couple job offers as a motion graphics artist. The first offer was at a huge mobile gaming company. They offered me a three month contractor position at about $30 an hour, which I thought was kind of weird because I was applying for a full-time job. So that was less than stellar. But the same week, I got an offer from a company that I liked even better. It was a startup in the online education space and they offered me a full-time job with benefits at $70,000 a year. So that was a no-brainer for me. After about six months or so, my job responsibilities expanded from just motion graphics to also being director of photography on some shoots. This came with a pay bump to $85,000 per year, which just about blew my mind. So while working as a motion graphics artist at this company, Rachel and I decided to start our YouTube channel, Mango Street. It got off to a great start, and after maybe six months or so, we started bringing in brand deals. Squarespace! Once we had a good amount of money saved up in our business account, we started paying ourselves $1,000 per month, but really trying to keep as much money in the business just to keep it going. After 10 months of working on the channel, we decided to take it full time. At full time, we paid ourselves about $4,000 per month, but it did vary based off our financials at the time. Some months we'd be waiting for a lot of invoices to get paid and money to come in, so things were a little bit tighter than we would have liked. So while initially it was a pay cut from my last job, I was working from home with Rachel and had a ton of freedom, so it was totally worth it. Plus, we were building a business with a ton of potential. Now, it's been a few years of doing this, so I usually pay myself about six to $8,000 per month, but again, this fluctuates based off the cash flow of the business. Well, that wraps up about every job I've ever had, and I hope that sheds some light on different positions in different industries. I'm always curious about topics like this because it can just vary so much based on where you live or who you work for, and a lot of people just aren't very forthcoming with that kind of information, which I totally understand. But I hope this gave you some insight based on my experiences. If you want input on what videos I make next, leave me a comment below or follow me on Instagram. I often post polls there asking what people wanna see next. And then do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button on this video. It'll really help this channel out. That's all for this one. See you in the next one. Bye.